Please join me in welcoming Adria. So what if you're the best programmer in the world, but you don't know it because you're not giving yourself the chance? My name is Adria Richards. I live in San Francisco. And today, I'm going to take you through three stories of women who are changing their lives and their careers through learning to code. So when we're kids, it's pretty easy. If you give us some paper and markers, we just go at it. We draw on the paper. We draw on the desk. We probably draw on the walls. But you have no problem expressing yourself. It's easy. You just recall a memory. You think about it. And then it ends up on the paper. So that's great and all, but unfortunately, as we become older, we start to get information from the outside that tells us how to act. And from that, then, we usually begin to think twice about what we need to do, how we need to respond to someone. These, these pressures that we have to conform with society often destroy our creativity and, and often our dreams, which is very frustrating. And the pressure to conform is pretty big, right? We don't want to not fit in. We don't want to be ostracized. Otherwise, something bad could happen. So I have a story that's from about uh, <clears throat> 5,000 BC. So up here, you see a ball of yarn. But what is very special and rare about it is the type of dye that's used. The Phoenicians invented a dye, and it was called Tyrian purple. And it actually is extracted from a sea mollusk, otherwise known as a slimy sea snail. And it takes hundreds of these snails. And the other thing, too, with these specific snails is they're kind of stinky. So it's not an easy process. But what was found uh, about this dye is that it's very long lasting. And in fact, then, when China began to bring over silk, this dye was used. And then in combination, this became extremely popular in Europe. And so when we think of royalty, we think of the color purple. Uh, and the Tyrian purple is the reason why. People still use it today, but it's uh, much more uh, easier to attain. So I want to go ahead and tell you some stories about women who are taking these risks. And working to change their lives. The first one is Keisha. She left Wall Street as an investment banker, and she came to San Francisco. She wanted to learn to code because she had a vision. And a year later, she got accepted into hacker school. So she is now getting paid to learn to code in New York City. And so she's so overjoyed that she can now actually take her vision of creating an algorithm to help people when they are in cities, interacting with businesses uh, and each other, have more information about that interaction. And coming from a financial background, you would maybe think that coding and programming don't go, but there are actually a lot of similarities. Next person I'd like to introduce you to is Sasha. Sasha is a physics and neuroscience teacher. She grew up in Connecticut. And she was offered a job at a startup. So she, too, moved to San Francisco. And that was a big risk. I mean, after investing so many years in your education and having a resume that obviously shows you're a teacher, moving to a startup to work as an engineer, exciting but not really planned. The great thing now for Sasha is she's working at a company called Code Academy, uh, also in New York. And uh, she works to create the curriculum uh, for people who want to learn to code. And it's, it's just an amazing match of passion and experience. Last person I'd like to introduce you to is Aniko. I actually just met her this week as well. She emailed me. She lives in Panama City. And she reached out because she has an idea to help musicians. But right now, she doesn't know how to code. She came across one of my YouTube videos and said, Adria, could you mentor me? Could you help me learn to code? Or can you help me find a developer, preferably female? Uh, the interesting thing about Aniko is she's an economics uh, graduate. And she actually already speaks three languages, English, French, and Spanish. So really, if you think about it, adding another language on probably shouldn't, it won't be that hard. So how have people done it in the past? How have people learned? How have people overcome these obstacles uh, to gain experience and mastery in something that's new? and certainly can be uncomfortable to learn. 
Well, let's take a look at like the Gutenberg press, right? The printing press. So 1455, the press came out. And while the items collected to put together this printing press had already been around, putting them together into a single machine made a huge difference. Before, to create a book, it was only done by people who were literate and could read. And that was definitely less than 10% of the population uh, in Europe. <clears throat> but uh, as uh, people went ahead and created books, they realized it was inefficient. Uh, a monk, for example, would take up to a year to write a single book. Also, books were created and written on parchment, which is actually the hide of cattle. That also takes about a month to create the sheets of parchment. So Gutenberg also thought about this. As paper was not so readily available, he actually was kind of lean and entrepreneurial. He said, where can I make paper from? And unfortunately, the bubonic plague had just passed through again. And he took the clothes of people who had passed away and remanufactured them into paper. And so he was able to print 300 pages a day. And 45 years later, they had printed millions of books. The first uh, really well-known book by Gutenberg was the Gutenberg Bible. But now, regular people had access to read. They saw other people reading. There were discussions about reading. Should I learn to read? What's going on with that? So it's really, <laughs> what's that reading thing? So it's, it's really important uh, to consider that. If you don't have access to the knowledge, to the data, talking to, or access to mentors, people who can actually help you with this, it's really hard to get started. So how can you get started? There are a lot of options out there. I'm going to share some with you. So I broke this down based on how most people probably try to learn something new. They sit down with a book and they try to read. Unfortunately, they feel frustrated. And that could be because that's not their learning style. There are actually a couple of learning styles known as VARC, visual, oral, reading, or kinesthetic. Most people are a combination of two or more. So knowing your learning style is important, and you can Google for that. So on the right side here, we have uh, lynda.com, which a lot of people are probably familiar with. You pay a monthly fee, and you can watch videos. You follow along. There are files to download. It's still probably only one step away from reading a book. Codecademy has exercises that you actually interact with online. And you're in badges, so there's a bit of social gaming involved. And you can share your achievements with friends. Then, even more interactive is Rails for Zombies, which combines an actual game. You're getting pursued by zombies. Obviously, no one wants to become a zombie, uh, but you're actually learning to code at the same time. What I recommend you to do if you want to learn to code, most likely because you have a vision, an idea, an app, something that you need to manifest, check out social learning. A great place to start is meetup.com. It's been around since 2005, 2004, and there are all sorts of groups that you can find on Meetup. A lot have to do with technology, but people also have cooking meetups and things like that. So definitely, meetup.com is a really great place to start. And it's international, so this is not a limitation to the US. Um, an another great example here is RailsBridge. And I'm an instructor uh, at RailsBridge now. It started in San Francisco. By, and it was started by two women, developers. They looked around the Ruby community, and they said, where are all the other women? And rather than complain about it or grumble, they said, let's make a program. Let's make a day and a half program where women can come and learn Ruby on Rails. And so we have curriculum. The groups are small, about six students, uh, a teacher, and then TAs. So they can ask questions. They can think about the information. They can process it. And that makes a huge difference when it comes to learning, especially if you have multiple learning styles. You need time to process. Engaging helps. Uh, trying things out in multiple ways, all very valuable. I actually attended RailsBridge two years ago when I was learning to code. And I attended again. And then I said, I want to contribute more because I'm really passionate about helping people become empowered so they can achieve their goals and their dreams. Today on the stage, we heard a lot of stories about struggles that people went through and successes. So one of my goals in life is definitely to help women uh, be successful and empowered, but also to help the world. And the last one we have here are hackathons. Now, they're sort of structured, but they're sort of relaxed. And that's usually where developers, designers, and business people get together for about 24 hours and build something. LinkedIn, in fact, had a hackathon here this summer. And so while they're a little bit uh, less formal, it's a great place to just try stuff and maybe fail. But you know, the worst you'll lose is 24 hours. Uh, so definitely something to check out. And uh, 
there I am jumping. I'm at a conference. I'm pretty excited. Uh, I'm a developer evangelist. So I actually talk to other developers about our product. And it's really great. Uh, the other thing to note is there's not really a lot of female developer evangelists. Uh, but I'm working to definitely have more women join on and talk about APIs and technology and programming. So here's the bridge that I want you to think about crossing. The women that I talked with you about today have already started their journey across this bridge. I've started my journey as well. And I know that being an entrepreneur is hard and it can be scary. Uh, and it can be frightening, but it can also be really exciting. So I encourage you to join me in crossing the bridge. Thank you.